It's a strange situation we find ourselves in with our detractors simultaneously faulting us for having no moral guide rails and too many moral guide rails, right? Because like on the one hand, you know, they say that without God, secular societies have no non-governmental way of enforcing ethical standards. But on the other hand, we're so damn good at enforcing ethical standards non-governmentally that they have to make those accusations in between complaints about cancel culture. Now, I want to be clear up front. The cancel culture isn't a fucking thing, right? It's a scare term for accountability dreamed up by people who aren't used to being held accountable. That's obviously not to say that canceling isn't a thing. It's just that that's always been a part of every culture that's ever existed from the beginning of human history. Well, hell, b b before human history, right? Because monkeys, wolves, and birds enforce ethical standards and punish offenders through isolation and ostracization. You know, and, and if you grew up when I did, you could probably name a few TV shows you loved that got literally canceled by some Christian group at some fucking point along the way. And of course, the biggest cancellation in the history of fiction came at the hands of their God in a 40 day reign. But somehow the stuffy white assholes in charge of shit or Swacos never took issue with cancel culture when religion was in charge of it because religious guardrails can be safely ignored by the self-appointed elite. You know, people smart enough to know that religious rules are based on bullshit. People rich enough to buy an indulgence or two. People important enough to twist the arm of God's appointed representative. People who are God's appointed representative. Because Swacos want ethical guardrails the same way they want speed limits for other people and not them. Now, I, you know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. I'm a late edition Gen X. Our whole thing kind of was not caring what other people think about us. Right. That was but it was hypocritical. Right. The hypocrisy at the heart of our generation was that we were all competing to impress people with how little we wanted to impress them. But the point is that we left this pervasive imprint on society that there's something noble in not caring what other people think of you. There isn't. You know, it's easy to think that when you're socially confined to like a high school in the rural South or a neighborhood in Utah. In those situations, an impenetrable sense of self-worth is a fucking survival mechanism for a lot of people. But in the wider world, if everybody hates you, it's either because you're an asshole or because everybody else is, right? Now, I, I want to be clear. I, I didn't add or everyone else is as a joke there. I, I added it because that actually happens. We call it bigotry, right? There are definitely people in every culture that the larger society treats with unwarranted derision, and we should never overlook that even rhetorically. But when you set that aside and you look at a person ostracized by the larger society because of their actions, that's just societal ethics working the way they're supposed to. Despite my generation's desperate protestations, that's so foundational to society that you might even say that that's what the word society means, that enforcement. Now, in Gen X's defense, we grew up in a world where those guardrails were in the hands of prudish insanity and had been turned against harmless profanities and discussions about sex. But in the emerging culture of today, they're far more often turned against slurs and sexist discussions. There are still plenty of Christians desperately scrambling to take control of what's deemed acceptable. Of course, there's at least a million moms worth, if you believe Monica Cole, but they're failing. You can tell they're failing because they're complaining about cancel culture instead of spearheading it. As secularists, we need to embrace that role and the responsibilities that come with it. We need to stand in defense of cancel culture because to do so is to stand in defense of culture. And to abandon that responsibility is to cede it. And believe me, there are plenty of groups that can't be trusted with that tool dying to pick it up the second we put it down. And when they wield it, we're no longer governed by the sometimes feckless whim of the crowd. We're governed by the entirely fabricated will of God. Our morals, our society's morals, instead of being derived through the imperfect democracy of the social milieu, are dictated by the impenetrable logic of the Swacos. Because in practice, there's no difference between being accountable to God and being accountable to no one.